Hey guys, how you guys doing out there? What's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing? What's going on? And welcome to the dark side of the room. How you guys doing out there? I am Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and I am saying to you, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for saying what's up, what's up, what's up. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. I want to thank you um, for joining me on the dark side of the room. And this is where old school values are made for new school players. So this is the stuff that we are getting into. Now, when I say players, I don't mean players because I can't tell you how to get girls. I'm, not, I'm, I'm really not that guy. I'm actually a very big nerd. But... Um, this is the show where I can bring some of my experience to the table and let you guys know what it was like for me in case you guys are out there and you're a little bit like me and you're going through some of the same complications. So I can just tell you what it was like, what happened and what it's like now and hopefully just um, with a little bit of hope, a little faith, a little trust, a little pixie dust, you guys can gleam a little bit of something from my experiences and maybe go through something that's a little different than what I went through. Hopefully better. Hopefully better. I don't like saying I want change and blah 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 because the only time I want change is when I'm turning big bill into a small bill. So not that often. Hang on a minute. Yep, 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 yep. Ah, there we are. So yeah, I'm not looking for change out there. What I'm looking for, the big thing that I'm looking for is improvement. Okay, that is what I'm hoping for. That is what my aim is. So I'm going to situate my mic a little bit better so I can talk to you guys a little bit more directly. All right. So as I was saying, welcome to the dark side of the room where old school values are made prevalent for new school players. And today we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about because um, I started this show talking about my old experiences. You can check that out over on the facebook or not on the facebook but on the um yeah you guys can check that out over on the youtube and i haven't finished because well i'm still aging i'm still here and i have been on a lot of misadventures as it were um not just adventures as to being a gamer but what that stuff has led to so i'm gonna get a little bit hey yeah how you doing so yeah today we are going to be talking about a lot of stuff and this episode might hurt not just me but a lot of other people out there so i'm going to be giving you guys some major trigger warnings because what i'm talking about tends to make people feel attacked okay and i'm going to put this out there right now i'm not out here saying that people are bad people are wrong but today we're going to talk about a lot of the a lot of the habits that gamers and most artists just consequences of growing up in the 21st century and what compli and what complications that might incur. And um, so I want to put out there flat out, I'm not casting judgment on any person for how they feel. I'm not looking for ooh, I'm just having a mic day aren't I um, I'm not trying to do the people do this because they're bad gig that's that's not how we roll here okay uh, we don't cast moral judgments on people unless they give like real honest to goodness reasons to cast moral judgments and those are you know holding people responsible for the circumstances of their birth be it their race religion creed gender identity sexual orientation their disabilities or their financial standing you know if someone believes that you're poor because you deserve to be poor we tell them you know put that card back on the deck um close the hole that's making noise open the other two holes that are way higher up on your face and um maybe you might learn something so that's what uh, we're doing here today. I want to give a super thanks and a super shout out to my people over at, oh wait, wrong one. There we go. Yeah. Over in NP City. How you guys doing out there? Thank you for showing up. Thank you for participating in the conversation. And if you guys 
want to participate in the conversation today. That is very easy. Very simple, very easy. Um, it's something that you can do simply by pulling up your keyboard and typing in back in the deck at gmail.com. It's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-A-G-D-E-C-K -E at gmail.com. Uh, send an email and if you want me to read it on air, you know what? I will. I will do that for you. That is what I will do. I, I will read it on the air for you. I got my email machine right here in front of me saying, yep, that is what we're doing. Also, um, let's uh, take a look over here. We can also get a hold of us over on our social media contacts, i.e. Instagram and Twitter. Just go to twitter.com or instagram.com. Type in um, twitter.com slash back in the deck or instagram.com slash back in the deck. And um, that is a major thing that you guys can do. If you guys uh, like what you see here, yeah, I sound like I'm taking all this real slow. I promise you I don't do any illicit substances. I'm just trying to make myself a lot more clear. Um, so let me um, let you guys know that if you guys like what you hear, you guys like what you hear, you like these discussions, and you want to show them to people and stuff like that, and you're not part of the Patreon, that's fine. I understand. A lot of people are broke. God knows I'm broke most of the time. All you got to do is head over to soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P. That's bid P. Okay, but include the underscore because there's another bid P out there and I got to talk to them. But um, you can download the audio from all of our shows. Download the audio from our shows and keep them forever. That's what that's my gift to you. And when I say my gift to you, I pay the money to keep the um to keep the soundcloud unlimited uploads and unlimited downloads for you guys okay and i do that out of the patreon and if you guys want to help us out with that that's easy just head on in to back in the deck or patreon.com slash bid underscore p and if you think we are cooler than a couple of cupcakes cooler than a bag of cookies cooler than a king size candy bar per month sign up be a decker it only costs a dollar. That's it. One dollar a month. Now, we got a lot of tiers, as you guys can see, and we start giving shout outs to every single person on those tiers, by which I mean Her Majesty Shannon Boom Boom Lay, His, Manis, His Majesty Paul D. Mansfield, and of course, our ace in the hole, Jennifer Kroll. That's right. So if you guys want to help us out and help keep the doors open and all that jazz i would really appreciate that a whole bunch now for those of you guys that are wondering what the other stuff we've been doing that's actually easy what i'm gonna do is we got a big thing happening right now i just got a um i just got a comment with a question so what we are gonna do on this one right here is um i put up a video yesterday um asking you know explaining why uh we don't review like the witcher and stuff and explaining my history on video games um so what and i got a comment i just found out about it because you know the the things they're like hey yeah guess what you got a comment and i'm like sweet um let's see at twitch.tv slash bid underscore p at 2 30 pacific time and yeah there we go so come out and join the discussion um now that i can do that um, we have Daryl over here on Facebook asking, um, is there a limit on emails? <laughs> and I'm letting them know that if they want them read on the air, um, limit them to two, count them, one, two paragraphs um, in order to fully communicate the point.
point and leave consideration condit no 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 consideration uh yeah leave consideration for other emails there we go boom 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 um oh tch. i'm like yeah read on there no it's the air and ah uh, yes twitch.tv slash bid underscore p cool there we go so now that we've got that out of the way um as i said today we got a lot of stuff going on um thank you very much vixen yes audience participation and real-time responses well i i ain't joking around i ain't joking around with that so yeah that's a real thing and you know honestly most of the time i am not going to call people out or call them jerks or anything like that we are here to build a positive community and i don't mean like a positive community in that um political way i'm talking like i want all of us to be friends maybe meet up at vidcon get some coffee play some games that kind of thing um so yeah so we can like steady mob as deckers at vidcon and at san diego comic-con and at all the other freaking conventions i do uh just to let the world know that we're here you know lgbt nerds we're here um nerds of color we're here you know nerds with very limited resources we're here and we've always been here so yeah now now that i got all that stuff out of the way all that stuff out of the way um today's discussion today's discussion is a real thing um and we gonna get to this now i'm letting you guys know right now this is going to be a longer show <laughs> now today's show is going to be pretty up there because we have a lot of stuff to talk about i was um i was talking to someone um another decker earlier today and it's interesting what um what they were talking about because as you get older a lot of things happen now let you guys know i'm in my 40s and so i'm mr um I'm the guy that has no problem sharing his experience, like I said, what it was like, what happened, what it's like now, um, with other people. But here is the thing on that. <laughs> yeah, here is a really, really, really big thing on that right now. Um, I ain't perfect, but I have learned a lot of things, okay? And um, there is an interesting thing that goes on when a person hits over 35 from what i've observed that friendships become different and you might be asking like well what do you mean by different well what do you mean by mean well what do you mean by bye you know and it's simple it's very simple um by the way thanks uh zano 199 we've got a new follower and that's awesome um same with you ryan you know don't think i um don't think i don't see y'all out there um one of the things that happens after 35 is your emotional currency, your spoons, your bandwidth, your energy, call it whatever you want, becomes a lot less than it was when you were younger. And um, now it's interesting because biochemically everyone changes. That is, you can talk to a neurologist and um, they can put you through different points in life like when you're a child everything is big and scary and it wants to eat you so you have those defense mechanisms i.e being liked being too cute to be eaten and swallowed um and then comes you know adolescenthood where the hormones to procreate start really busting themselves up and then you get angry and and sexually frustrated for the first time and you know that pretty much stays for a long time and you know later on you start you know wanting to settle down make families and all that stuff this is biochemically by the way and there comes a point where you start wondering what you have to leave this world okay um in truth the midlife transition that tends to lead to crisis is a big thing um that is when the hormone that determines the sex that you most identify with 
starts to reduce and the hormone of the opposite sex that we all have. All men have estrogen, all women have testosterone. But there comes a point in our lives where whichever hormone we produce um, more often in our younger years, that starts to dwindle, it starts to wane. And the other hormone starts to increase, okay? This means at a certain point, men get more sensitive. You know, they get more concerned with being liked and, and um, they don't, they're not as aggressive. They tend to slow down and ponder more. Where <clears throat> women feel like, and I'm talking just sex, not gender roles, not anything like that, but biological sex. Um, women start to become more less patient, more aggressive. They start giving less craps about um, the other stuff they've given. This is one of the reasons why granddad ends up being so cool and grandma gets meaner and meaner <laughs> as time goes. You know, um, in the Latino community, we all know that abuela runs the house. It's that simple. And you don't want to get on her bad side. I mean, she's nice and everything, but yeah, with the growth of testosterone and life experience, elderly women become a little more ruthless. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a thing. Um, but what that does to behavior as far as building friendships is that we don't have the same amount of energy as we had when we were teenagers, when our bodies were really, really spry and we could take over the world. Um, fighters go through this all the time. There comes a point where just the young guy hits harder. There's always going to be somebody that hits harder, hits faster. Um, you can talk to Ronda Rousey. You can talk to Mike Tyson. Um, there just comes a point where you're not as fast as you used to be. You get tired a little more, uh, a little faster. And that is where economy of movement starts coming in. And socially, we start to do that. We start to look at things with economy of motion. You know, um, when we're young, we're assigned friends. I mean, let, let's face it. You grow up in public school um, and you get put in a class and essentially you're going to get a friend you're stuck in that environment you're going to get a friend and those environments are going to determine who your friends are and all that jazz just watch any teen movie you guys know what i'm talking about if you're in high school i am so sorry because i would say it gets better but not for a long time it, it won't be forever it'll just feel like forever and um in truth in truth as you get older you can become more selective about your friends. And at 35 and on, there becomes this craving, this real, um, this real time, honest to God craving for deeper friendships, okay? Um, connections, oh, we, we use that word a lot. We use connections, we wanna connect with people. And as we wanna connect with people, there comes a point where we don't quite realize what connecting with people consists of. It's something that has a foundation and it, and you have to build on it. You have to take a chance with new people. You have to build. You've got to risk being hurt. You have to risk being let down. And all of those are costs that can't be avoided. But as you get older, it's not that you're afraid of those costs because, you know, oh my God, I've been hurt so many times before. It's just a level of tired, you know, it's, I'm going to be super selective in the beginning so that, well, I'm going to make absolutely sure that this person is worth the risk. Okay. Um, are they the type of people I want to be around? And you slow down on the whole making friends thing. Um, now this leads to something that I call the paradox of loneliness. Okay, that is really, really, you know, that's a real thing. The paradox of loneliness. And that is the paradox that states, I want friends. I want good friends. I just don't want to jump through all these hoops and deal with all these morons. Ugh, you know, um, one, of, one of my favorite examples of that paradox comes from the movie Bridesmaids where the main character is losing her best friend to a different life, but she gets another best friend and Melissa McCarthy. And um, 
you know, this is not the, I had friends at, you know, we, sh they essentially just met and she was like, look, I'm gonna be there for you. I'm gonna smack you in the back of the neck. I'm gonna let you know when you're screwing up. I'm gonna be there for you when the world is against you. And no, you haven't known me since you were eight. That doesn't mean I'm not the person that's gonna be there. You know, that, you know, and um, it's a confusing time. It's a really confusing time, but I love that idea. And it came during a scene where it was like, look at what you're doing, L look at what I'm doing. And she bites her on the butt. And she's like, I'm life and I'm biting you on the butt. That is what I'm doing because that's what life does sometimes. And that is it, all right? You lost your best friend, that's fine. Here's a new best friend right here, <laughs> you know? And um, the paradox of loneliness, especially with those of us who are marginalized of the marginalized, okay? I, I mean, marginalized nerds and marginalized geeks is a little weird because um, as you guys know, I live in Southern California and things are weird here. And by that, I mean Southern California had a reputation when I was growing up, specifically LA, for being plastic, not real, you know? Um, we look really good. We, we keep up appearances like pros. You know, we're nice, but we're not kind, okay? And um, I know a good amount of the friends that I've made over the years, I notice I've made those friends by being introduced by other friends that were introduced by other friends before them. You know, it, it's, it's, it's this weird thing that turns in to this ubiquity of gatekeeping, okay? Um, the, I don't want to get to know you unless somebody that I know knows you and can vouch for you. And that is inadvertent, you know, a good amount of the time. It's, you know, understand all of these things I'm talking about today. And I need you guys to really internalize this. I am not casting negative judgment on the characters of anyone. When I'm, when I'm talking about this stuff. These are habits that when I say are bad, I mean they do not serve the purposes that support the type of social lives and hobby lives that most of us say that we want in, um, in person, okay? That, that's a big thing. I'm not saying you're bad. If you do these things, I'm not saying you're bad. What I'm saying is if you do these things and you're not happy with your social life, these things might be something that you want to alter and try something different. There's no guarantees that these things will work, okay? But what I also know is that being on the receiving end of these things didn't feel very good. Um, they don't feel that good now. Um, now, between the paradox of loneliness and the ubiquity of gatekeeping, how do those things coincide? Well, the paradox is I'm really lonely, you know, that whole choosing more selectively to reserve your bandwidth and keep your spoons. But if you don't find the people to do that, you know, if, if you don't find enough people, then what do you do? I mean, do you adjust your filter? Um, do you just deal with being by yourself? You know, I mean, that, that kind of thing. Now, um... I understand that making deep connections with people takes a lot of work. Although I'm in, I'm in LA. And as I was saying about the plasticness, you know, um, there's a lot of plasticness based on defense mechanisms and past trauma. Um, this idea of it might be what's on the inside that counts, but no one's going to look inside a building that looks ugly on the outside. You, you see what I mean? So even deep people have to be shallow in order for their depth to be discovered. <laughs> okay. They, we have to look shallow. We got to be pretty. We got to be going to the gym. We have to be, have all of these diets where, where we have a machine that makes alkaline water and we're eating kale and, 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 and we're, we're, you know, trying these new paleo diets and blah, 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 blah. But just being yourself is very difficult. And I used to get a lot of crap for saying stuff like this until a lot of my friends moved outside of California and they're seeing how things are a little different in other states. So that makes me smile just a little bit. 
Um, but yeah, so when it comes to like that paradox of loneliness, is you have all these lonely people who are just aching, aching for connections with other people. And they close the door. They close the door to that connection. You know, they, 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 their filters are so strong and their loneliness is so deep, but they keep out anyone who doesn't live up to some strange criteria. And so this is where, excuse me, this is where they get into what I call, like I said, the ubiquity of gatekeeping. Well, the people that are in my life, <laughs> yeah, the people that are in my life are the ones um, that I trust to bring other people into my life. And one of the things I've learned recently is that when that's the case, there's not going to be much variety in thought. There's not going to be a whole lot of real exchange of ideas because people tend to be around people that are already like them. Um... Now, make no mistake, that makes me as a person rather lonely because I'm, I'm not terminally unique, but I am different from my environment, okay? And environment does determine a lot, I mean a lot of what people go through, a lot of how they become people. So as gamers, like video gamers, tabletop gamers, um, dancers, writers, comic fans, just nerds all the way across the board, um we end up falling into this ubiquity of gatekeeping where even people who say, well, I don't do any gatekeeping, they don't consciously do any gatekeeping, okay? But I have come across many, 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 many people who don't want to talk with you if you don't like, like if you like the same media that they do, but for different reasons, then you're exiled. Um, if you don't like the media that they like for reasons that are personal you are cast out um again as a good amount of the followers here know subdivisions is a real song about the suburbs you know um which is any escape might help disprove the unattractive truth that the suburbs have no charms to soothe the re the reckless dreams of youth or restless i think it's restless dreams of youth um but yeah, it really is. Conform or be cast out. Be like us. I only want people around me that are already like me. Um, when I first moved to the suburbs, I met hundreds of people like this. They only liked media that reminded them of themselves. Um, they made it a point to like media if the main character of the media shared their name. Okay? Um... I remember I was talking to a friend of mine and she was listening to Boston and I'm like, you're into Boston? She's like, no, I just like that song. And I'm like, why? As I see Marianne like walk the door and I'm like, oh yeah, your name is Marianne. Is that it? Just because they say your name, you say it's a good song? Like, not the songwriting, not the musicianship, not the harmonies, not the rhythm, not the groove, just your name. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. That, that's a real thing. All right, that, that's whatever reason you like it, you like it. I happen to like the song because of all those reasons, but I can't talk to you about those reasons because you're not interested. You're just happy that it has your name. All right, cool. Now, I talk about this stuff in public, and I'm expecting a whole lot of comments. Don't tell me how to enjoy stuff. And to those guys, I say, dude, have a blast. Just just have a blast with it. Um. Um, I don't argue publicly. I don't do that. I don't get into arguments with people publicly because there's a lot of dark stuff I see in the world and I want to make it brighter. That's all. I don't want to argue for the necessity of that darkness. I don't want to look clever. I don't want to own anyone. I literally just want people to be happier. And I want to spare a lot of young people the same strife and darkness that I had. That's why I'm here. Okay? That's the whole thing. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that that's it. You know? I'm not trying to protect them entirely. But as an adult, it's my responsibility to do what I can to make things a little bit easier for the people that follow me. Right? You know? At least that's, that's what I was around. 
But anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, so what people end up doing is they fall into that ubiquity of gatekeeping. And most of the time, it's subconscious. They don't even know that they're doing it. And we've all done this every once in a while. And it's easy to say, well, a lot of people just like hanging out with people that are already like them. I'm not saying it's bad to like. But what I am saying is keep an eye out for whether or not you're excluding and why. You know, why would one, excu one exclude? And why would someone craft their own bubble now i know i don't talk about politics on this show and i'm not gonna launch into a political discussion but i will let you guys know this um i have my political opinions i have um my political leanings and this is super tuesday so you know everybody's in a primary practically but what i am gonna say is this um the friends i have across the board they do not agree with me nor do i agree with them on a lot of subjects a lot of subjects and sometimes they're screaming matches you know um and it's my prerogative to look at my friends who might unknowing be what i call soft r racist and point that out and ask them if that's what they want to be especially when it comes to talking with a black friend that they trust some have chosen that path and i've let go others don't want to choose that path but don't know how not to be on that path because of all this ubiquity cool you know so i don't personally have the bubble that i live in i'm not surrounded in an echo chamber i talk to people from all walks of life because i'm trying to find a solution that causes causes the least amount of suffering you know um and that's my choice that's my path that's what i do you do you the only thing I will ever, ever suggest is do the you that causes you the, mo the most joy while causing the least amount of suffering around you. That's all. You know, that's rule number one with being a Decker. That's it. Um, but yeah, so that is a number one thing. But the question is, why do we do these things? Why? You know, why do we keep our filters so fine why do we build these echo chambers around and from what i've observed and no i have not read any studies and all that other stuff um this is all opinion and i'm down to talk with anyone about it but the truth is oh thanks jason and another um subscribe hitting that prime subscriber thanks a lot man um one of the things i've noticed i've majorly noticed is of course in the circles that i run in um, and the life that I've lived, I've noticed that a lot of people do these things based on one major thing, the consequences of trauma. That's huge. Okay. I mean, the consequences of trauma, um, are deep and they're barely known to people who have PhDs <laughs> in this stuff, let alone, um, <laughs> let alone those of us who studied other things in school. Scars run deep, and when scars run deep, um, yeah, when scars run deep, that takes a lot to recover from them. And while they're out there, while those injuries are there, our behavior changes, our outlook changes, and it takes a lot of mindful observation of ourselves to not fall into a lot of habits, you know? Um, where I come from, South Central Los Angeles, we're practically we were practically born into drama into trauma you know terrible school uh terrible schools um not many not many um you know not a whole lot of opportunities out there and a lot of ubiquitous um segregation and discrimination and prejudice um and that has a lasting trauma you know there's a lot of people with my skin color from my neighborhood who really um, suffer from distrust, you know. And I know a lot of people in the LGBTQ um, IA plus community um, after suffering, you know, crimes and discrimination. You know, these these injuries are sore. They're they're open, and so many times, so many times. Um, 
if you've ever had stitches, the one thing that you end up doing to someone who's not your mama and not your doctor is going, no, get away, get away, don't touch it, don't touch it, no, get away, don't touch it, you know? And that's because we're afraid, we're primal, we're right back to that place where I'm already hurt, I don't wanna make it worse, you know? And that is a huge, huge um, consequence of traumas that we grow up with. And I mean, the traumas of being teased in school, the traumas of being cast out, the traumas of being passed up for promotion because of your gender or the natural hair that comes out of your head. Um, the traumas of not being to join, not being able to join a gaming group because there's someone that has those old opinions, either by dead naming or um, dead gendering um, trans people, and you might be trans. So as much as you like everybody else in that group, that one jerk out there is making it tough to get in. Um, being a black guy, I gotta say. Um, People are always trying to get away with dropping the N-bomb. People are always trying to go, well, I don't feel that way, so why can't I say that word? And I'm like, why is it so important for you to say that word? You know, and they are slashing out from their trauma of being told no for the first time in their life and actually suffering the consequences for something that they don't see the harm in. And it goes against my trauma of suffering under that kind of abuse. And a center line has to be held. You know, this, this takes understanding on both sides. And only with understanding and clear vision can we actually see who the real monsters are. Um, where people who don't understand what real racism looks like, or real sexism, or real homophobia, especially in the gaming world, because everybody thinks that they're the good guy. You know, a lot of people don't quite understand that the proliferation of rape jokes at D and D tables um, hits people the wrong way, and it's not something cool because you never know when you might be in the presence of a victim of sexual assault and or rape. You know, um, yes, I differentiate the two because I don't like saying that the whole thing that's here from you know from verbal and situational to seriously bloody and violent you know scope is different and it needs different categorizations you know to determine the different levels of punishment and the amount of learning that has to be done you know um but yeah that's that's a real thing you know um but with the consequences of trauma one of the biggest consequences and this is something that i see all across the united states um, all across the United States with every subject, especially gamers, is a deficit of trust, okay? A huge deficit of trust. No one is willing to give anyone the benefit of the doubt anymore. At least, okay, I can't say no one. I don't like sweeping general statements like that. But what I will say is that not enough people give other people the benefit of the doubt, okay? Um, it's, it's a very, very, very true thing that so many people have hurt us in the past. And the older you get, the more people are going to hurt you. You know, um, there's nothing that we can do. Excuse me. There's nothing that we can do to alter the behavior of the world at large. We cannot do that quickly. These are generational changes. You know, these are the things that we have to make better for the people that come behind us, just like um, for the people that came before us making it this way. Okay, I promise you, 90% of the people that marched in 65 for racial equality, they're not the ones who got rich in the 80s. You know, um, Dr. Dre and Jay-Z did not march with King, but their parents participated in that thing. You, you, you see what I mean? <laughs> And there is a huge, huge deficit of trust because, let's face it, being betrayed makes people feel stupid. You know, I see it all the time. I've experienced it. Um, I've gone through a lot of these things, you know. I don't want this person to betray me. I don't want them, you know, every time I make a new friend, you know, 
I'm like, look, I'm your friend and I need you to trust me. And I am trusting and asking you to never lie to me. You know, I don't care how ugly the truth is. I'll take the ugly truth because that's the kind of person I am. You know, those are my requests. And I cannot tell you how many of my friends I've caught in lies, just blatant lies over the past like 10, 20 years, you know? And um, to address this deficit of trust, a lot of us have this binary thinking, okay? It, it really is, it's a binary thought process. We either trust them or we don't, you know? And since I speak scientifically and spiritually, I see everything on a scale. You know, I let people know that, you know, you can trust me with your life. You can trust me with your secrets. You can trust me with your kids, but don't expect money back if you loan it. <laughs> you can't trust me to pay back loans. That's why I don't ask for money or that's why I don't ask for loans. I'm not like, hey, let me borrow a dollar. It's can I have a 20? No, I'm not paying it back. I don't want you to think I'm gonna pay it back. I don't want you to bet on me paying it back because my life is not that stable and it never has been. However, <laughs> if you ask me and I have it, chances are I'll just give it to you, you know? Hey, so I'm hurting, can you, can you loan me five bucks? I'm like, here, just take five bucks. You know, do you have a cigarette? Yeah, here, have a cigarette. You know, that, that's what I mean. That's, that's how I operate. Um, you know, so I've spent a long time a very long time um, examining my barriers and establishing my boundaries and keeping hard on those boundaries. And guess what? It has been hard. But you know what was harder? Hiding. It was very difficult. It was more difficult to not trust people, especially since I'm not rich. You know, I am a fiscally... Um, a fiscally divergent African-American male in the United States of America. If I don't trust people, I don't eat because I got to trust my bosses not to fire me. I have to trust that there actually was a complaint, although it's not in writing. I'm bullied into trusting that that person that hurt me didn't mean it. You know what I mean? So... There's a lot of hoops I got to jump through just to get through the day. However, I don't give certain people I know the same amount of trust I give my girlfriend. You know, I don't give um, other people the same amount of trust that I would give my mom. <laughs> you know, it's not that I don't trust them at all. It's okay. I trust you here. You know, like, this is all the trust that there is. I trust you to about here. I trust you to about here. I trust you to about there. I trust you to about here. You see what I mean? It's a scale. It's not a binary thing. Um, and the people that are suffering the effects of trauma tend to see trust as a binary thing. Okay? Um, I can't let you into my walls. I, I'm totally skeptical. I'm, I'm absolutely like reticent to let anybody in because I can't take being hurt again. Now, personally, I believe that you can, but I believe that you can because I'm asking you to let me in and I'm letting you know that I would never hurt you intentionally. But if I do, I'm about fixing it and not about saving my own image or my own sense of self. Um, but in truth, there's a lot of people out there that are more concerned with their sense of self than they are with actually living up to the principles that they have. And this is not an attack on anyone. It's not like that, you know. It's, um, it's a real thing of, I hope there are kids watching. I really hope there are kids watching because if you are, I really hope you guys are, um, I'm going to give you something that was brought up to me a little earlier today, and that is, Grown-ups don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I'm a grown-up, I can tell you. Uh, we're making it up as we go along, just like you guys are. Now, that doesn't mean we don't know what you're doing, but we really don't know what we're doing. We're still learning. The thing that makes us grown-ups is that we're better at learning than you are. <laughs> at least we should be. You know, we, we should, after all this time of learning, we're a little better 
at doing it or a little better at figuring out what's important because other grown-ups actually write those rules you know um and that is a big thing you know but a lot of people are so invested on being good people you know that being incorrect and being wrong or different are, are the same you know one is a moral judgment one is a calculative judgment and if they miscalculate that's the same like being wrong or being incorrect about what year a movie came out has the same effect on their brain or has the same effect on people as pushing a stroller into traffic and doing a funny little dance you know um people like to make it so that again binary you're either a good person or you're a bad person you're either smart or you're stupid you're either an authority on something meaning you know the 141st letter of page 196 of the game that you are trying to teach and if you don't know that then you don't know more than I do and I'm validated and I have to blah you know <laughs> um, I'm gonna check uh, I'm gonna check the chat real quick because it's uh coming up in a lot of things um, let's see here oh yeah yeah you're absolutely right on that Quinn um, yeah sometimes you let people in and you overshare too quickly and there's a reason for that there is a reason for that um and it's part of the next couple of subjects that i'm going to talk about wow my viewers are dropping off that's fine um there is something called the nighttime securities that i learned about when i was running an all-night coffee shop and that is um <laughs> if ever you talk to um if ever you really talk to someone who works a nighttime security guard uh, job, they are by themselves. And the first person that they talk to, it's just like, um, they'll talk and it doesn't matter how bad you gotta go to the bathroom, they'll just keep talking. They'll just keep talking. And most of that is loneliness, you know? Um, living in the dark, not having any company, not having anyone um, that's actually willing to hear you. And then we get into that scarcity mindset of this person's going to, I got to get it all out before they leave. You know, <laughs> that that's one of the things that they do. Um, and yeah, it takes a lot of self-control. I can't, I don't teach classes in this stuff. This is all, these are all therapy things. All right. Um, but one of the things I have noticed over my years and years in living, um, there have been something on the internet that's like, when you define something, you're defining it in order to defend your actions in regards to it. And I want to address that because, again, these, these whole things. Now, that whole thing I talked about as far as the ubiquity of gatekeeping, a lot of the things I hear about it come down to introversion. Hi, I'm an introvert. One who chooses or one whose personality is characterized by introversion, especially a reserved or shy person who enjoys spending time alone. And... This is a weird thing. I learned something about growing up in the suburbs from a friend of mine that grew up in the suburbs. And that is, you suburbanites really are afraid of being what is considered rude. And I admire that, I, I really do. It's like, I don't wanna be rude. I don't, I, I don't wanna be rude. I don't wanna come off looking like a jerk, you know? Um, but one thing I've also noticed, and again, this isn't an attack, it's just an observation. Um, when you guys have intentions that you judge as rude, you try and hide the intentions, but a good amount of you still perform the actions, you know, um, you know, that whole tell me an ugly truth. I know a lot of introverts and a lot of introverted people. There's a lot of people who I've known for a long time that don't want me in their lives anymore. So they ghost, they stop returning calls, they do all of these things under the pretense of, oh no, I really like you, I'm just busy. Or, oh no, I just really blah, 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 blah. And it's like, dude, don't lie. You're an introvert, I'm an extrovert, I make you uncomfortable, say so, we can part ways, and I can get on with my day and you can get on with yours. You know, but that's rude, and that's the thing. I have no problem with people not wanting to be rude. But I do question from time to time, what are the things that constitute rudeness? And from what I'm noticing, 
this whole thing of uncomfortable, like, oh, this makes me uncomfortable, that makes me uncomfortable. I once looked at someone <clears throat> in one of my most frustrated, um, one of my frustrated moments and said, you know, with everything that makes you uncomfortable, what makes you comfortable? Like, what do you like? Everything I hear from you is suck, suck, suck. This sucks, that sucks. I hate this movie. I hate this, this. I hate, I hate. And I'm like, dude, what do you like? <laughs> you know, give me one example of something that you enjoy without complaint. Just one, you know. And they got defensive as all could be. <laughs> Which, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was being a jerk uh, when I asked. I was genuinely wanting to know. But my delivery, yeah, it could have been nicer. You know, I wasn't being nice, though. I was being kind. I was really proving a point and letting that person know that they were making me uncomfortable. Um, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> <coughs> um, because our personalities weren't, weren't uh, they, they didn't gel very well. Um, so, yeah, and a lot of people, I know a lot of people are genuine introverts, and a lot of people hide behind introversion. But it's one of these of, if you enjoy spending time by yourself, say so. Make that clear. Make that crystal clear so that people who, excuse me, uh, so that people who interact with you are like, hey, <laughs> they like spending time by themselves. They're a private person. So I'm hanging out with you, and it's been about three hours. You probably just want to be by yourself and stare in the dark. Cool. I'm going to go out and go skydiving or something like that, you know. Not that I skydive, because that's 150 bucks a jump, and who has that kind of money? Um, but see, that's the thing about my personality, is I'm an extrovert. <laughs> One whose personality is characterized by extroversion. Broadly, a gregarious and unreserved person. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. You know, that is, that's what I am. That is, that is me. I love being out there. I love being in the thick of it. I don't even have to be the center of attention. I just want to be doing things with people. I like genuinely connecting with people. And I mean genuine, not superficial. Okay? I talk about the weather during storms. <laughs> I talk about the weather during heat waves. You know, when people are falling down, it's like, okay, it's really hot out here. Have you gotten your fluids? You know, or man, it's raining, it's cold, the streets are flooded. This is crazy, isn't it? You know, and I talk about the weather when I leave California because everywhere else has it. So, um, so yeah, I'm like, oh my God, there's snow. I have not seen this since I was a child. Oh, wow, look at this. It is snow, you know. Please tell me more about this frozen water that falls from the sky. It is so alien to my culture. Um, but all in all, you know, I'm about being with people, okay? More being with people than being with their issues, but at the same time, you can't avoid that, you know? And um, and this wraps right back around in the deficit of trust. Um, I remember <clears throat> when I met my podcasting mentor, and I helped him out with some stuff. And on the air on one of their shows, uh, the co-host was like, I don't get this guy. What does he want? And it's like, I just want your friendship. I mean, I want the ability to give you a call and say, hey, did you see this particular game? That That's it. <laughs> you know, but all in all, I try and be the type of friend that I always wanted, you know. Um, and I suppose that's that's unusual. I don't know. Like I said, I just work here. I don't know. But um, let's see. Uh, our chat is going off today. I'm loving that. Our viewers may be fluctuating, but you guys that are here, you guys are, you're, you guys are my people. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, wow. Yep, yep, yep. Working on it for sure. Healing and working on it. Yeah, yeah. Good pals. Still able to do that thing. I appreciate that, Grundy doll. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's really it, it's really one of those things. Um, so all of this raises a huge question you know a huge question okay and this is this is something that i'm wrestling with and a lot of people that are out there are wrestling with and it's well how do i find friends and the truth is in the times that we live in um i can't give you a definitive answer i really can't i can tell you the way that i do it 
is I shotgun. I throw science against the wall and I see what sticks. I'll go to a game store and I'll start talking to people. And some people will talk back, some people won't. Um, I bring up questions on the internet. And when I'm not attacked by Nazis, um, some people answer, some people won't. But I tend to put myself all the way out there. Um, and I'll tell you, um, my lovely, my lovely, lovely girlfriend um, was talking to someone a couple of weeks ago when we had the podcasters meet up. And they were saying, you know, I took classes in understanding subtext and blah, blah, blah. And then I meet this man. And it's like, no, he doesn't hide anything. And he says what he means. And he means what he says. And that I don't know how to handle that sometimes. <laughs> so I'm not saying be like me. All right. They're, you know, being my friend comes at a massive cost. Okay. I'm a hard person to be friends with. I will let you know that right now because I will challenge your beliefs. I will challenge your perceptions. And I won't do it to be a, I'm looking for uh, a jerk, a jerk. I won't, I, I won't do it to be a jerk. Um, but just my existence tends to do that, you know. Um, the magic that I live my life through has made it so that if you have a blanket statement about any group of people, if I'm not living proof of the opposite to your theory, then I can introduce you <laughs> to that because, yeah, um, I've met a lot of people and a lot of the people that I've known um, are very, 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 very unusual. You know, I mean, it's a real thing. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it, it's a real thing that people go through and, um, you know, it's definitely difficult. It's difficult. Um because honestly <clears throat> i don't believe in too much comfort you know um that's that old chinese proverb stuff that came into my head from my kung fu teachers of when you're comfortable with what you're doing then you need to try harder <laughs> and i'm like well thanks i don't know how i feel about that but yeah it's a thing um this is interesting this is very interesting because i thought we were going to be going long today because i had so many things to talk to you about but I've gotten through most of them. Um, deficit of trust, consequences of drama, how does one find friends, and the truth is, I don't know. I don't know. But these are a lot of the things that we go through as gamers. Now, what it's like for me now, um, now I do have to jump through a lot of hoops. I do, I go through these things myself, especially since I work with kids, you know. I show up saying, hey, I want to start a club, blah, 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 blah. And people are going, why do you want to do this? I don't trust the dude. And I'm like, dude, I'm not trying to deal with to your kids. I, and I know you're broke, so there's no point in kidnapping them, right? <laughs> you know, you can't pay any freaking, um, you, you can't pay any ransom. And um, so, yeah, it, it's really one of those things where um, it might seem right now in 2020 like the world is on fire. And people are guarded and evil at the same time. Everyone right now is the bully and the victim, so it seems. Especially if you spend a lot of time, a lot of time on the internet. But what I am saying is this. We are in a different spot historically than we ever have been. Because we have instantaneous communication with anyone on the world at any time. Okay. Um, and it's easy to stereotype the world in general, especially since we have so many boxes to put people in. But the one thing I got to say is take your risk. Take your risk. Realize that you are a special person and that the person that you are dealing with is special as well. And hopefully the things that make you guys special are compatible or if nothing else hopefully you might have matching luggage with your emotional baggage but take the risk you know take the risk and live all right everything requires balance a little bit of left a little bit of right a little bit of up a little bit of down a little bit of red a little bit of blue you know a little bit of purple a little bit of green you know um because there is goodness everywhere there are chances for awesome every day and the more that we guard ourselves and 
you know, try to avoid any types of pain or discomfort or repeated stuff. And the less that we look at our own filters, the ways that we see the world based on our experiences and our hope, um, the more we keep our head in the sand, the less fulfilled our lives can be because well, it's the difference between traveling during the day and traveling at night with a flashlight. Okay? When you travel during the day, you can see just about everything. You know, you can take us you can take a look around. You can go, "Hey, are those a bunch of painted rocks over there and how did they get up there?" I don't know, let's take a look. Or, hey, is this the place that has this alien theme on the outside? Wow, look at that architecture. Oh, and they sell beef jerky and hot sauce. Let's go take a look at that. But after dark, all you have are the lights that show up. And those lights are the voices that are the loudest. And if you judge the entire planet only on what you can see in the city after dark, you're going to miss a whole lot of wonder. You know, so that's what I have to say with that. But, you know, wow, I totally went Forrest Gump on that one. And that's what I got to say about that. But um, as much as I thought we were going to be going late, I guess we're not. So with that, I'm going to say thank you guys for popping up. Super thanks to NP City. You guys are killing it today. Um, and if you guys want to drop an email or those things, and I'm double checking, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. didn't get an email, but that's fine. Um, that's super easy because our music, yeah, look at that. If you guys want to drop us an email or want to know what we are up to, um, it's real simple. All you got to do is pull up your keyboard and type in back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail.com um hit us up on the social media both instagram and twitter just pick whichever one dot com slash b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E um join our patreon patreon.com slash b-i-d underscore p go to our um, SoundCloud to download the audio from all this at soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P. And of course, if you're part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy known as Facebook, join Deckers on the Book. You know, if you guys actually have like hobbies that fall into the nerd category, if you guys are, are artists and illustrators, or if you paint miniatures, or if you do any of these things that require creativity, write short stories, write poetry, all that stuff, we want to know you. We want to know you, we want to see your stuff, and we want to tell you that you're awesome when you put your stuff out there. So join Deckers on the Book on Facebook, that wretched hive of scum and villainy, where we're trying to be one of the little beacons of light. And again, our moderators make real sure if people start calling names and all that stuff, we're like, no, 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 no. No, if you got something negative to say, then say negative negativity on the content. But if you insult the person, I have a band hammer the size that makes Stormbreaker look tiny. So that is what we're going to do. So pop in and all that stuff share your work show your work and thank you guys for joining me on the dark side of the room because today has been yet another personal day and do not forget that if anyone anyone in the world tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth oh my god i didn't know girls did this i didn't know that gay people like doing this i didn't know black folks could read <laughs> you know if anybody tells you anything like that um, based on your circumstances of birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disabilities, your financial standing, you just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying thank you guys for joining me today on the dark side of the room.